I still can't shake the feeling of terror that washed over me that fateful night at Blackwood Manor. It was an experience that changed my life forever. A night filled with horrors beyond the scope of rational explanation. I feel compelled to share this story, not only to unburden my own conscience, but to warn others who may be drawn to the dark secrets of that accursed place. The ominous tale began with an invitation. I had received a letter from an old friend, Samuel Blackwood, who had recently come into possession of Blackwood Manor, a sprawling, decaying mansion nestled on the outskirts of a forgotten, fog-shrouded village in the English countryside. Samuel had always been an eccentric, adventurous soul, but I had lost touch with him over the years, so receiving his letter was quite unexpected. In his invitation, he implored me to join him at the manor for a weekend of exploration and reminiscence. Despite a twinge of unease about the vague nature of the invitation, I found myself compelled to accept. The prospect of seeing Samuel again and the intrigue of Blackwood Manor was irresistible. With a heavy bag in tow, I set out for the village with the sun setting in the distance, casting an eerie, orange glow over the dark, looming silhouette of the manor. When I arrived, the village seemed to have been suspended in time, as if history had forsaken it. A cobbled street wound its way toward the manor. Its houses, covered in ivy, windows long shattered, and doors permanently shut. An overwhelming silence hung in the air, interrupted only by the distant hoot of an owl and the occasional rustling of leaves in the woods. Blackwood Manor, as it emerged from the mists, was a sight to behold. It stood like a relic from another era, towering turrets reaching towards the heavens, with gargoyles leering down upon the world below. The paint on its grand facade had long since peeled away, revealing the decaying wood beneath. Upon closer inspection, I noticed the manor was surrounded by a dense and overgrown thicket, almost as if the forest was trying to reclaim the estate. The great, wrought iron gates, creaking ominously, slowly swung open as I approached, and I walked up the weed-infested driveway, guided only by the eerie moonlight. Samuel was waiting for me at the entrance, his face haggard, and his eyes filled with a mix of excitement along with trepidation. He greeted me with a nervous smile, and he welcomed me inside, where the air was thick with the scent of age and decay. As we settled in, Samuel explained the reason for his purchase of the manor. It had been a Blackwood family property for generations, and he had always been fascinated by its dark history. He recounted tales of restless spirits, lost souls, and an ancient curse that had supposedly plagued the family for centuries. I listened with skepticism, attributing it to the overactive imagination of a man who had spent too much time alone in this foreboding place. The manor's interior, it was a labyrinth of dimly lit hallways, each filled with portraits of long dead ancestors, their eyes following me with an unsettling intensity. Paintings, dust-covered and cracked, 
whispered tales of misfortune, madness, and untimely deaths. But the most ominous of them all was the portrait of Lady Eleanor Blackwood, a forlorn woman said to have been the victim of the family curse. Her pale visage bearing an expression of eternal torment. Dinner that evening was a somber affair, with Samuel and I feasting on meagre provisions and dusty bottles of wine. As we talked, the conversation invariably turned to the supernatural. Samuel shared stories of strange occurrences, of doors that opened of their own accord, phantom footsteps in the dead of the night, and whispers that echoed through the empty corridors. With the wine coursing through my veins, I scoffed at his tales, dismissing them as mere products of an overactive imagination. I was convinced that the eerie atmosphere of the manor had played tricks on his mind. That was until the clock struck midnight. The grandfather clock in the corner of the dining room chimed with a deafening resonance that seemed to shake the very foundations of the manor. Its pendulum swung with an unnatural, metronomic regularity, and I felt an icy hand clutch at my heart. The room grew unbearably cold, and I could see my breath forming in front of me. Then, from the depths of the manor, we heard a faint, mournful melody. It was a haunting tune played on a piano with deft and ghostly fingers. Samuel and I exchanged terrified glances and we both knew there was no piano in this manner. The music swelled, filling the room with a chilling sadness that seemed to seep into our very souls. Without exchanging a word, we followed the sound down a corridor and there we found a door, one we had not noticed before. It was slightly ajar, and the haunting melody emanated from the darkness beyond. Samuel hesitated, and I could see the fear in his eyes, but curiosity drove us forward. As we entered that room, the source of the music became clear. A grand, ebony piano stood in the centre, its keys, moving of their own accord, played by invisible hands. The room itself was a place of enchanting dread, filled with paintings that seemed to depict the events of nightmares, and a collection of oddities and curiosities that defied reason. The spectral pianist, hidden from view, played on her music luring us deeper into the room. Then, with a sudden and malevolent crescendo, the lid of the piano slammed shut, nearly catching Samuel's fingers. The room plunged into darkness, and the temperature plummeted further. We were trapped in that room, with an unseen presence, and a sense of dread settled over us like a shroud. In the darkness, we fumbled for the door, struggling to escape the room that had become a prison of horrors. But as we inched towards the exit, we were met with a whisper, cold and menacing, that sent shivers down our spines. Leave now, it hissed, a voice both ghastly and human. Before it's too late... We heeded this warning, flinging the door open and fleeing into the cold, moonlit corridor. The piano continued to play, its melancholic tune echoing after us, as if mourning our escape. Back in the dining room, we tried to rationalise the experience, but 
it was impossible to dismiss it as a mere hallucination. The room was filled with a palpable sense of malevolence, and the melody still haunted our ears. We knew we could not stay in the manor another night, but as we made our way toward the entrance, those heavy oak doors swung shut with a thunderous force, sealing us inside. Panic gripped us as we realized that our only escape had been barred. We pounded on the doors, screamed for help, but the manor remained eerily silent. It was as if the very walls themselves conspired to keep us within their dark embrace. Exhausted and terrified, we decided to search for an alternative exit, but our attempts were fruitless. The manor's layout, it seemed to shift and change, leading us in endless circles. It was as if the building itself toyed with us, a living, malevolent entity. Our ordeal continued for what felt like an eternity, with strange, unnatural occurrences happening all around us. Candles extinguished on their own, shadowy figures moved through the corridors, and disembodied whispers filled the air. The manor seemed to feed on our fear, growing stronger with each passing moment. As dawn broke, Samuel and I found ourselves in a dark, forgotten corner of the manor, a place that reeked of despair and decay. It was here that we uncovered a hidden door, concealed behind a tapestry. With trembling hands, we slowly pushed it open, revealing a narrow, winding staircase that descended into the bowels of the earth. Our last shreds of hope clinging to us, we descended into the darkness, the stairs spiraling deeper and deeper into the abyss. The air grew colder and more oppressive, and the flickering torches that lined the walls cast eerie, dancing shadows that seemed to whisper sinister secrets. As we descended, we encountered a series of locked doors, each adorned with grotesque symbols and inscriptions that were unfamiliar to us. These symbols seemed to pulse with an otherworldly energy. I could feel their malevolence seeping into my very being. We eventually came to a chamber, unlike any we had encountered before. It was vast and filled with an unearthly greenish light. In the center stood a grotesque ancient altar adorned with symbols of a forgotten religion. Upon the altar lay a stone sarcophagus, its lid with the visage of a leering, horned demon. As we approached, a whispering, disembodied voice filled the chamber, speaking in a language that no human tongue could possibly replicate. Samuel and I, we exchanged terrified glances, realizing that we had stumbled upon something beyond our comprehension. The voices grew louder, and we could feel its words borrowing into our minds driving us to the brink of madness. With a final, anguished cry, Samuel fell to his knees, clutching his head in torment. I reached out for him, but it was too late. His eyes glazed over, and he began to speak in a voice not his own, reciting incantations and prophecies of doom. I fled from the chamber, 
the agonized cries of my friend echoing in my ears as the manor itself seemed to quake with an unholy fury. I knew I had to escape, to find a way out of this living nightmare. But the twisting corridors and shifting walls continued to confound me. I was pursued by a relentless presence, a malevolent force that whispered horrors into my ear, promising eternal torment and suffering. It was as if the very essence of Blackwood Manor had come alive to claim my soul. My flight led me back to the grand entrance hall, where the cursed piano sat, still playing that haunting melody. Desperation overcame me, and I pounded on the door, screaming for release from this living hell. Then, in one final act of defiance, the piano's lid swung open, and the unseen spectre played a dissonant chord, sending shockwaves through the manor. With an otherworldly roar, the manor itself began to crumble, its walls and foundations shaking and splintering. I was cast to the floor as the world around me disintegrated into chaos. It was a whirlpool of malevolence, a descent into madness. In all the chaos, I was flung from the manor, my body tumbling through the air and crashing to the ground outside. I lay there, dazed and battered, as Blackwood Manor collapsed in on itself, consumed by the darkness that had festered within it. As I staggered to my feet, the ruins of the manor were swallowed by the earth, leaving only a smoldering crater in their wake. Samuel and the horrors that had tormented us were gone, lost to the depths of an unfathomable abyss. I stumbled away from that accursed place, my mind fractured and my soul scarred by the horrors I had witnessed. I was the sole survivor of that night, but I carried with me the weight of the darkness that had once again consumed Blackwood Manor. I share this tale now, not for sympathy or absolution, but as a warning to all who may be drawn to the sinister secrets of that forsaken place. Blackwood Manor, it is a cursed realm, a gateway to horrors beyond comprehension. To those who may be tempted to explore its dark depths, I implore you, do not enter, for the price of curiosity may well be your soul. The malevolent entity which dwells within the manor is patient, and it hungers for the torment of the living. Beware the haunting of Blackwood Manor, for once you enter, there may be no escape from the terrors that lie within.